This is a pretty easy project. You take 1 8 inch plywood and you cut it into 3 quarter inch strips. And we'll even find a use for all the scraps. Pay attention to the grain of your plywood. When you cut your strips, you want it to be stiff. You do not want your plywood to bend like that. All of this is being cut from scrap wood. You need to find out which way your grain's running. That piece is going the wrong way. This one's good. You take a three quarter inch strip, mark it, cut and sand it. It'll look something like that. Then I'll run this through the table saw. The main part of the clamp will be pieces that are six inches long. And I've cut six of those. Now you need some strips that are about five inches long. They'll be cut to length later. I had one video segment that was out of focus, so I had to play a little catch up here. When you take your strip for one of these arms, take a piece of the scrap and glue it across there and make sure that it's square. Put a clamp on it. When it's dry, come back and cut that off here and here. Then you take one of your six inch long strips and you put it in here, take another piece of wood, put glue on it, and glue that on there to where this will just slide freely. You don't want it to be like this. You don't want it to be too tight. Put it in there and clamp it and try it. And make sure that that will move firmly but freely. And then let that dry. When that's dry, we'll put glue on here and here Keep your glue away from this edge. We don't want any of the squeeze out to go inside here. Take the clamps off, go to your belt sander, and sand both sides of these. And your six inch strip should go in and out of there freely. And we'll go to the table saw and we'll cut off these ends. And then this is four and a quarter inches long. After I get all these arms put together, I have a few choices to make. I know that in this case I've used some wood that was not very good on one end, but I'm going to taper these, so that really doesn't make any difference. I take one of my six inch pieces and I start trying these and I see how these slide in and out. There's always a possibility we've got a little bit of glue in there and these move quite well. This one, I'll try it, and that one, that doesn't work very well. So, this one will be a candidate to be glued on the top of the six inch piece. I've tapered both of these arms, and I've sanded this by hand very lightly until that passes up and down on that six inch piece freely. This has been cut to half an inch that was three quarters. And I have tapered both of these down to three eighths of an inch. Currently, this clamp is going to provide about two and a quarter inches of clearance. With a quarter inch bit, you want to set your drill stop so it doesn't quite penetrate that eighth inch plywood. That's easier said than done because of the flutes on this brad point bit. 
and I stick a piece of three quarter inch in the slot to act as a backer. Quarter inch bamboo doll. I cut that to a 5 8 inch length and glued it into those pockets that I drilled. The brad point bit poked a hole all the way through into this cavity. I didn't want epoxy to go down in there. So I took one of these 3 quarter inch wide sticks and I rubbed both sides with paraffin, stuck it in there. I glued one side and let that cure. I turned it over and I glued the other side. Now these will just slide off of there. If this was not in there, there's a good chance that the epoxy would have penetrated into the inside area. Now it's time to start matching these pieces together. You install one of these arms that fits tight on the stick. You can glue that in place with super glue or epoxy and we have this part that slides back and forth. Before we start to install these little bamboo dolls, we want to put these all together. We want to sand this edge and this edge to match. We're going to mark these points. We're going to cut or sand a curvature and this provides additional clearance so that your clamping pressure is only out here on the end. I chose to taper these one and three quarter inches from here to here down to a three eighths inch height. And I cut that off and then sand smooth. I then mark one and three quarter inches to here and a half inch from here to here. And I'm going to sand a radius on the spindle sander until those points are connected, just like this. I let this epoxy cure for at least one day before I go putting rubber bands on there. And now that appears to be more than adequate in terms of strength. The clamping force of this is going to depend on the size of the rubber band and how many rubber bands you put on there. This is not intended to crack walnuts. This is a modeling clamp and something that I use quite a bit when building model airplanes. If you have a single rubber band on there, it probably won't even close that sandpaper. With three rubber bands on there, no problem. So you can vary the amount of pressure by the rubber bands, or you can take a rubber band, you can double it over if you're not wanting this to open very much. And this is really good when you're building model airplanes and you're trying to clamp wing sheeting to a spar. And sometimes you can use these if you're trying to clamp across the rib. And that's the reason for this type of floating jaw that's on here. Sometimes you can get that to clamp on an angle. And if it doesn't want to stay on that angle, you can put some sandpaper on this. And then I'll guarantee it'll stay on there. Sometimes a little sandpaper on these two faces can be pretty handy as well. I used a lamination of three pieces of 1 8 inch plywood, which is exactly the same thickness as this. And I ran that through a table saw and I cut it to a quarter inch thickness. Made some 5 8 inch wide strips of 1 8 inch plywood 
and glued that to both sides of that piece. I cut this off in a one inch length. I marked a half inch here and tapered the sides. In the center of this I came down one eighth of an inch. I'm using some small bamboo skewers and these will fit very nicely in a 7 64th inch hole. So I drilled 7 64th inch hole here. I centered a hole in this area, drilled 7 64th inch hole, went back to the drum sander, rounded this over, give you all the misalignment that you need if you need any. And these pins will be glued in on one side permanently so they will not come off. One disadvantage of having these is that you're losing about a half inch of opening clearance on this clamp but you're very close to having a four inch opening. Without those jaws on it you've got about a four and a half inch opening. More than you're probably going to need anyway. I made three with the self-aligning jaws and three without. And on the end, I put a three-quarter inch length of the same bamboo dowel that I used here. And that just keeps these from coming apart. So that's the last thing that you want to do. And before I did that, I took these all apart, making sure to keep these in matched sets because they've all been sanded to match each other. And I put a light finish on here that seals the wood but did not add any thickness and this moves back and forth very freely. If for some reason that gives you a little resistance, just a light rubbing with some paraffin and that will be very easy to operate. These clamps are not entirely my idea but this is my improvement over something that I bought a long time ago. I purchased these overseas either late 70s or early 80s. Singapore or the Middle East, I don't remember which. There is not a name or a patent number or anything on any of these. I don't remember where I got them or who made them. These have certain problems. This main support is very flexible. When you put rubber bands on there and you go to stretch this thing that will bend these uh, jaws come off of here. Half the time they fall off while you're trying to apply the clamp. Same way there's a, two sizes, the large and the small that comes off and these have a base down here. This one I've got glued on. It was difficult to find the glue that would stick to this and you can see this comes off. So. This is not really necessary. I like this a lot better because generally this is how you're applying the clamp. My version has a longer reach. It opens wider. It's a lot stronger. This will not fall apart. Thank you for watching. If you haven't watched one of these before, please do so. It will help support this channel and I appreciate it.